For the past 10 days, we've been living full time in our unfinished camper van, which means that we're quickly finding all the problems with our build. Problem, our cabinets are a mess. Not enough space and too many big open cavities. Solution, rip the useless plastic covers off of the doors and stuff backpacks, flip-flops, and other soft items inside. Eventually, build proper wooden inserts. Problem, our vacuum doesn't store well. Even though it's small, it takes up a lot of space in the black hole of our cabinets, and stacking it on other stuff violates first order retrievability, i.e. you should never have to move one tool to get to another. Solution, design a custom holster for the vacuum and produce it on the 3D printer that I brought along on this adventure. Problem, we have nowhere to hang our wet dish towels. Solution, do way too much research on towel bars, find the perfect one on Amazon, buy it, install it in what you think is the perfect location, realize it's terrible, and then reinstall it in the truly perfect location. Problem, our propane system is turned on with a solenoid valve, but the switch for that solenoid valve doesn't have a home. It's just hanging loose under the stove in the depths of the cabinet, and it's a pain to fish it out every time you want to turn on the gas. Solution, design a 3D printed switch holder that mounts to the underside of the stove. Problem, even with proper ventilation, the smoke alarm goes off every time we cook. Solution, take it down while cooking. Sometimes the best solutions are the simple ones. Problem, the electrical system for the living quarters of our van lives in one of our benches. That holds two big batteries, which powers our refrigerator, lights, ventilation fan, 3D printer, outlets, and those batteries are charged in two ways. The first is through solar panels that are mounted to the roof of the van. And the second way is through an alternator charger. That takes energy from the van's engine and uses it to charge our batteries. But when that alternator charger is running, it generates a lot of heat, which decreases the efficiency of everything in the electrical box. Solution? Add active ventilation to the electrical bench using two temperature-triggered computer fans. Problem, there's no way to mount the computer fans to the electrical bench. Solution, design custom 3D printed fan shrouds. So we're currently driving to Asheville, North Carolina, and I really want to print the back of the fan shroud. So I thought, let's see what happens if we do some printing while driving. Meanwhile, Eden's driving in the pouring rain and I feel like I'm stressing her out right now. You're not, I'm still boring you. <laughs> okay. So I wasn't able to actually start the print while driving. The vibrations of the van were getting in the way of the vibrations that the printer uses to calibrate and level the bed. But now that we're stopped for lunch, I got the print started. So we'll start driving again and see if this thing works. Can you just tell I'm putting on my belt in the background? <laughs> I didn't even realize. <laughs>
right, the print is done and it seems to have worked out pretty well. It's not perfect, but pretty good for printing while driving. So I just finished printing the second piece while the van was stationary. And from a distance, these look almost identical in quality. It's only when you get up close, you can see these kind of wavy layer lines. This is the one that printed while the van was moving. And this is the one that printed while the van was stationary. Much cleaner, but from a distance, virtually identical. So I connected both fans to relays in the Serbo GX. That's the central computer for our electrical system. And this is a Ruvitag. It is a Bluetooth temperature sensor. It also measures some other things that we don't really need. So we can put this in the electrical bench. It will sense when the temperature gets above a certain level. And hopefully that will trigger the fans to turn on. So I set up the Ruvitag in the electrical bench and we've been driving for about an hour now, which means there should be enough heat generated from the alternator charger that the fans will have turned on. There we go. We got airflow. Let's see, if we go to the back one, we should see it getting sucked in. There we go. <laughs> I don't know why I thought a white ribbon on a white 3D printed piece would show up well on camera. Anyways, <laughs> it works. We got ourselves some active ventilation. Problem, we have an outdoor shower attachment for our sink, but the little clip that comes with the shower head just straight up doesn't work with it. Solution, use a squeezy clamp. These little guys are truly one of the unsung heroes of our van. We use them for everything, for hanging up wet clothes, strategically hanging up a blanket, truly the multi-tool of van life. Problem, it gets really cold in the van in the winter. Solution, move south. <laughs> Maybe get a heater eventually. Eden really wants to get a heater. I really want to get a heater. <laughs> it's not too bad today. <laughs> Georgia, pretty warm. Southern Georgia, all right. Northern Pennsylvania, fail. <laughs> Problem, our fridge slides out when we take hard left turns, even with a bungee cord, and you can't pull it out enough to open it fully. Solution, replace drawer slides with longer locking drawer slides. Solves both the sliding out problem and the can't open it all the way problem. Honestly, I don't know why we didn't do this in the original design. Problem, the heavy drawers that hold our plates, bowls, pots, pans, and other kitchen equipment slam out when we take hard right turns. Solution? Well, this one wasn't so obvious. This is probably the solution that I spent the most time thinking about in this video. From complicated, completely novel 3D printed inventions to passing a steel bar through the handles and into a hole that I drill on the floor. But in the end, this was a case where elegant simplicity was the real answer. The truck strap gets rid of the issue with the bungee cord in that being elastic, it easily slid open when all the weight from the pots and plans went flying into the drawer fronts. A tight truck strap is basically rigid. Oh, nice. 
One of the most satisfying parts of this solution is how the swivel D-rings still allow us to access the storage under our tow kicks. Since it can swivel up and out of the way, we can pull out the front of the tow kick no problem. Pretty easy to use, but I wouldn't be surprised if we figure out a better one two months down the line. Let me know in the comments if you can think of a better solution for these drawers. Abby, ha Abby has an idea. What? I'm going to speak for her because she's shy in front of the camera. Uh, her idea is to fill all of the drawers with treats and then she will open them and eat them all. And then you won't have anything in the drawers so nothing can fall out or <laughs> slide open. Is that right, Abby? Problem. My laptop storage stinks. I originally designed this upper cabinet to hold my laptop, camera gear, journal, Kindle, and be a charging station, but it's just too many things for one small cubby. The only way to fit my laptop in there is to stack all my camera gear on top of it. And I don't especially love stacking things on top of a $5,000 computer. Solution, design a custom 3D printed holder for my laptop that bypasses the cabinets altogether. This allows me to store my laptop vertically right next to my workstation where I use it the most and free up valuable cabinet space. The problem seemed to never end. Not because we did shoddy work, but because it is impossible to anticipate every personal need and nuance of living in a tiny space. Some things are easy to fix, like replacing bungee cords with locking drawer slides. Again, not sure why I didn't do this for the 3D printer right off the bat. But some, like the continued need for organization, rattling cabinets while driving, figuring out how to hold up our upper cabinets instead of using our heads, and the fact that our sink just randomly became unseated a few days ago, will require a bit more thought. But I don't resent the problems. In fact, they're one of the things that excites me most about van life. The ability to constantly customize this home exactly to our liking. The fact that we have the tools with us to do these repairs anywhere. I mean, we're currently parked on St. George Island, this tiny little island off the Gulf Coast in Florida. The fact that we have friends on the road that will help with larger projects, all that is just so invigorating. Right before we moved into the van, I had this revelation that this is the first place I've lived that I've actually owned. The first place where I actually have some skin in the game to make it as nice as possible. And it's funny saying that, surrounded by our unfinished walls and unpainted cabinets. And it might take a year before this thing is actually done, but man, I am enjoying the process. And I am so grateful for all of you who watch my videos and support this channel for making this possible. If you would like to directly support this channel, you can gain exclusive access to behind the scenes content and my private Discord page by supporting this channel on Patreon. I would like to give a special thank you to my top supporter on Patreon, my mom, Kathy Kurt. Thanks mom, I love you. And I realized I forgot to say it in the last video. I'm so sorry. Love you mom.